Signala says this one line from one of the keys in the secret ending. Why are you searching for answers where there are only questions? And that is what this video is about. Talking about the parts of the game that hint at a more beneath the scenes type of situation that, for all we know, might never be solved as to what it's truly referring to. A good friend of mine said, hey Chris, instead of keeping these details to yourself and trying to work through them yourself, maybe you could, you know, ask your fans for their opinions. You know what? That's a good idea. So now, despite my awful mic, I will showcase the sharp pieces of the game that I still cannot piece together. Drops of paint from a painting we simply cannot see. Maybe some of y'all will be able to make some more sense out of this than I was able to. Oh, and regarding the title, a bunch of people want me and wanted me to make a Signalis iceberg, which is certainly an idea. So I figured the deepest part of this iceberg would be the details that really nobody understands, including myself. So yeah, but with no more delay, let's just get right into this. To start, let's begin with something that I actually solved while producing this video. On the Signalis wiki, there is listed a hidden debug command called Octoon. This command returns a series of variables set to true or false, which the wiki states it doesn't really understand what the point of this command is. It hypothesized, however, that the variables are used to mark progress. This is a good guess, and it's honestly quite close to the real answer. The real answer is honestly quite stupid. What other word starts with the letters A, C, H? If you guessed achievement, you're correct. This is the flags for the achievements, which check if your account has completed those achievements. However, it doesn't do this with interconnectivity with Steam, as I would guess it would. Rather, it just reads the profile of the account you have selected. Meaning if you click on an account that completes the game with promise, or whatever, and just gets every single thing but the survival ending, then it would mark all of those bullions true. As I was also able to prove this detail by getting it to return a false variable when I used a new profile, despite having all the variables set true prior. So that is one mystery we actually have the answer to. The rest is not going to be as insightful. So on the topic of debug commands, we get our next headache. Looking at the commands the wiki doesn't understand, we have the time state command. To even begin to try and develop a theory as to what this does, let me contextualize another confusing command. The ts command is a command that intakes an integer between 0 and 2 and sets a variable called time state to the value you provide. What does this time state variable do? Well, it seems to control the speed of images and cutscenes, as well as the display of different textures that are dynamic in the environment. I can demonstrate a couple examples of this real quick on screen while we talk about them. So, the TS command exists, but uh, the question is why? What point did the devs have at testing the cutscenes at faster speeds? One could wager, well, maybe it was so they could skip cutscenes when testing, but there is already the skip command, or the skip button specifically for that usage. So I honestly have no clue why the devs would implement such a command, especially considering that it also impacts the static displays in the background of the levels, which is another thing you don't really need to change a lot. But back to our main point, the time state command. What does it do? Well, simply put, no clue. On one hand, you could assume that it's connected to the TS command, since they both refer to the time state. However, entering the command quite literally doesn't do anything. So, what could it do? Well, I have two theories. One being that it's an outdated version of the TS command the devs forgot to remove but stripped the code from. If this is the case, though, why did the devs care enough to really re-implement the already pointless time state command into the TS command and update it to a new usage? If it's already something I said earlier, doesn't really have use from what I can tell. The other theory I'll introduce is going to require providing another mystery that relates to all this. So key observers of the game may have noticed a strange change by the devs between the Sparrow and base versions of the game. That being in one of the cycle notes that refers to the duration of time Arion changed the Penrose day cycle. This time went from 6.13 to 12.6, so what was the purpose of this change? Honestly, yet again, I have no clue. And before somebody goes, well, that's to make it so rot front days and vignetta days are synchronized. Rotfront is believed to be Ganymede, and if that's true, it has days that are 7 Earth days long. So 12.6% isn't really going to make up for that. If the change is meant to just be a cute adjustment or played for other parts of the war, that's one thing for the subject of another video. But one theorist has proposed that maybe this is a hint for the TS variable, and potentially a hidden puzzle. 
and that's why it's in this video. Now, wait, wait, before we all go, nah, they're crazy, they might be onto something. Considering how there are commands like check check and modern kind which are used to bypass puzzles elsewhere. So how do we know that time state isn't in the same category? Well, honestly, we know nothing about it, so this is all just theory. It could be used for a puzzle, it could also not be used for a puzzle, and it could be just quite honestly pointless. Next little obscurity beneath the ice for us to consider lies in the Penrose. Is the ship that there is a little bizarre occurrence. If one cheats in a radio, they will notice a couple of radio signals. These are not weird, they are remnants from the demo, so not something to really note. What is weird, however, is what the code calls one of these signals. Hint radio. Hint? Hint for what? The audio of this radio just states emergency beacon Penrose 512. That isn't really a hint to my knowledge, but while I was at it I wondered, wait, we don't see an emergency beacon anywhere on the ship to my knowledge, do we? And I looked around, and we don't. Like walking around the Penrose, exploring the cockpit, you will find nothing labeled an emergency beacon. You can call me crazy in this regard, but think about it. Everything else in that cockpit is fully labeled. The landing information, the control panel, all of it is organized and labeled if you investigate it. So why would this beacon, if it exists, not also be labeled? And that could be a lore thing, you know, maybe the Penrose doesn't actually have a beacon. And this could also be an easy example of Chris has officially lost it. But I just think it's a bit confusing for me to wrap my head around as to why something would be noted on one of these radios and then just not appear. Next then, we gotta grab your diver outfit because we're gonna go a lot deeper. For beyond the game's code, we can journey to what has been removed and lost. Part of the game's code that were lost in planning and removed before release. Ghosts of lost ideas that will likely never fully be understood unless the devs let us understand them. The next part that we're getting into here can't even be found in the game's code. It's more so what the game's code cannot find. Confused? So am I, because welcome to things that Christopher's Unity Explorer logged as missing that confuses him slightly. For context, Unity Explorer is a mod for Unity games that can do a lot. Amongst those things, it can print logs whenever the game files a error log. I.e., if the game tries to locate a lost asset, it will print that detail. Now then, this part isn't as extensive as the others. Rather, while putting this video together, I got these error logs, and I was like, Zam, we should really cover that. So, first up we have string ID exc dig site home does not exist. So this line, we see the localizer, which is the thing that translates everything for us, locate, trying to locate a value to referring to something called exc dig site home. The exc tells us that this belongs to the mines, or to stod1, which considering its names most likely means it's from the mines. Since it's from the mines, this could mean originally at some point in development, the mines would have included another room or home-like place. Next we have localizer string ID minimap labyrinth does not exist. This one isn't that much of a mystery, it's just most likely a minimap that used to be in nowhere that was likely removed for the full release to increase the difficulty. Following that we have localizer string ID mem gestad home does not exist. This is another place referred to as home, which is a strange occurrence considering the earlier home instance. Perhaps this location appeared in both instances of Gestad. No, I was, I was just messing with you. These home places are actually likely referring to an internal idea that the devs likely scrapped, seeing as we also see this error in other places, like nowhere. But it was cute for a second to imagine a home screen with Gestad. Come on, y you know, it would have been adorable. Um, but I think this home concept is something I just have no idea what it actually was referring to, because it's just in most scenes. Now we can conclude with a lot, I have zero idea what in the hell it even means. And uh, truly putting it on the bottom of the iceberg, we have Euler did not have an Astar. To avoid unnecessary fine call, please assign this an editor. Then the exact same with Star Shield didn't have an Astar. To avoid unnecessary fine call, please assign this an editor. Yeah, I have no I have no idea what the hell an Astar is, so good luck figuring out this one. If anyone has any ideas, let me know. But that's really all I've got. The Depths of Cities code has nothing but remnants that display how much change occurred during this game's development. If anyone learns more about these things, let me know below in the comments. I also have a Discord link in my description that you can feel free to pop over, hang out. Tons of cool people would also love to hear about your ideas there. But I think with a lot of these things, we're simply never going to know what they truly meant, because it was lost in development. And some of these things might have cool sounding names or cool concepts, and I earnestly believe that the signalist we got perhaps was better than these ideas, because perhaps there was reasons they were scrapped. 
But yeah, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all well next time.